So we are going to simplify radicals that come from the quadratic formula, which we have not actually covered yet, right? And we're going to multiply polynomials using the box method. So very soon, we're going to be covering something called the quadratic formula. You may or may not have seen it in some previous math class. Um, and it looks like this. It's just a formula. It's got a bunch of letters in it, right? And sometimes you use that. You replace all those letters with numbers and simplify. So today we're going to be doing the practicing, the simplifying part. So here's an example. I've got negative 16 plus or minus the square root of 128 all over 8. And I'd like to simplify that. So we've been working on simplifying radicals. That's what we did on Monday. So if I was going to try to simplify the square root of 128, I would run through my head all the perfect squares and ask myself if any of them divide into 128. Any? 64 is, that's the biggest one that will go into 128, yeah. So yeah, you might have your list of perfect squares or you might have it list in your head and you go, okay, does 4 go into 128? Yes, but I want to see if anything bigger goes in. Does 9 go into 128? No. Does 16 go into 128? Yes, but I want to see if anything bigger goes in. And you keep going and going, and then you get 64, and 64 is the largest perfect square number that will divide evenly into 128. So I'm going to copy all the other parts of the um, expression, just get copied down. And instead of 128, I'm going to write 64 times what? 2 because 64 times 2 replaces the 128. That's all over 8. Okay. Then I can take the square root of 64. What is the square root of 64? 8. So when I take the square root, this, it comes out of the radical, and I write the results. So I have negative 16 still, just copying that, plus or minus. The square root of 64 is 8, and I still have a 2 under the radical. And that's all over eight. And then I can break this up into the sum of two fractions, each one over eight. I have negative 16 over eight plus or minus eight root two over eight. Right? Because if you had, this is kind of the reverse of adding two fractions together. If we had started with this last thing on the right and I asked you to add those two fractions, they've got the same denominator, so the denominator would stay eight and you would just add the numerators. So I just broke it up. And then what is negative 16 over 8 reduced to? Negative 2. And over here, my 8s cancel, and I get plus or minus root 2. OK? So you'll do some practice with that in a little bit. But we're going to change gears, and we're going to talk about multiplying polynomials. OK, so we're going to learn the box method. Um, the box method is very general, so you can use it in a lot of different situations. Um, and it's going to help us with another important upcoming topic. So um, even if you feel like you can do this without using the boxes, use the boxes for at least some of your practice today. And I'll show you how to do it. So I want to multiply 4x cubed y to the fifth by this long polynomial here, negative 3xy squared minus 7x cubed plus 2x squared y. Right. So I want to multiply those two things together. So I set up some boxes. And I'm going to have my 4x cubed y to the fifth along my width of the box. And then my other factor, this whole big long thing, is going to go along the length of the box. And for each term that's separated by an addition sign or a subtraction sign, you put a line in the box. So, I'm, so I have three small boxes here. Then I'm going to find the area of each small rectangle by multiplying its length by its width. Right, so in this first box, I want to multiply 4x cubed y to the fifth times negative 3xy squared. So let's just multiply the numbers first. What's uh, 4 times negative 3? Negative, negative 12. Okay. And then I'll do the x's. x cubed times x, what is that? x to the fourth. And then the y's, y to the fifth times y squared? y to the seventh. Good. 
All right, then in the next box, it's got the same width as the first box, so I'm going to multiply to find the area of that box. I'm going to multiply 4x cubed y to the fifth times negative 7x cubed. Or just 7x cubed. So what's 4 times 7? Yeah, 28. And there's this subtraction sign here that comes follows down, right? Or you could think of it as negative 28, either one. x cubed times x cubed? Close. x to the sixth, right? Multiplying like bases, add the exponents. And then y to the fifth times 1, y to the fifth. And then I've got this plus here. And 4x cubed y to the fifth times 2x squared y. 4 times 2 is 8. x cubed times x squared, x to the fifth, right? And y to the fifth times y, y to the sixth. Then you add up all of the terms in your boxes, and that's your answer. Okay. Okay, so. When I add up negative 12x to the 4th, y to the 7th, negative 28x to the 6th, y to the 5th, and 8x to the 5th, y to the 6th. Those are the three terms in the boxes. All right, one more example. I'm going to multiply 3x minus 4 by negative 2x plus 5 using the box method. So each, each term that's separated by a plus uh, uh, an addition sign or a subtraction sign gets its own box. So I'm going to have 3x minus 4. And then two, negative 2x plus 5, I have negative 2x plus 5. Yep. And I think I might put the negative with the 4. I think that'll be clearer. 3x minus 4. OK, so then I'm going to multiply and find the area of each little box. So what's negative 2x times 3x? Negative 6x squared. squared. And then what's negative 2x times negative 4? Positive 8x. What is 5 times 3x? 15x. 5 times negative 4? Negative 20. So we found the area of each little box, and then we write down the sum of them. So I'm going to have negative 6x squared plus 8x plus 15x minus 20. And then we have some like terms. What, what two terms can I add together here? 8x and 15x are like terms. So when I add them together, I get negative 6x squared plus 23x minus 20. Okay, that's it. That's all I got to show you. Um, you are going to have plenty of practice in the class activities.